Speaking of armadillo, it just reminds me of that one guy from K who ate an armadillo and got lactose. What the fuck? I forgot to mention last time when we were playing because I was too busy dying and discussing the awarding of an Olympics with you. So, um, part of the plot of this is that all the bosses are like reprogrammed service robots. Alright. So, so, like, the one from last time was actually a construction robot. Anyway, we do an acid man today who's a chemist that's been reprogrammed to be a mad scientist. <laughs> because this game is fucking weird. Well, I can see the transition. Oh, uh, you know what we should do, like, in post when we're done? Go on. We should just, like, have the engineer edit out all of the audio and replace it with Johnny Depp as Hunter S. Thompson. We really get copyright strike for that. No, because I'll just put... Okay, we're only using the audio, not the entire scene from the movie. Did you eat all this acid? But you can only really get copyright strike if you use the entire scene. Oh yeah, it's, it's a remix because I'm speaking over it. I'll take it the yellow does damage to you. Oh yeah, I believe the yellow's acid. Just getting annoyed by these tiny spiders. Spiders, punch them! <laughs> oh god, that got me trophy somehow. Oh, shit. Just saw the corpse of a robot floating through the water. Goddamn water physics. Not generally a good sign. Yeah, I think we actually have just ended up in the sewers. I'm just, like, I'm just mulling over, do we have the engineer put the sewer count on screen or not? No, that meme's dead. An that meme's dead anyway. What are you talking about? What meme? Oh, um, there's like a running gag started off by this one YouTuber where um, you put a cow on the screen every time there's a sewer level. Wait, what? No. Because sewer levels are usually like the worst in any game that they're in. Right. So I forget that you don't watch Civ 11. Unless it's the uh, road to nowhere, I drive around a coop. That's not a sewer level. I mean levels... That's why I said unless. I mean levels literally in a sewer race. Alright. Ironically though, Crash actually does have a decent sewer level. Oh god. And then Activision will come along and say their water physics in their sewer level are revolutionary, groundbreaking. We have actual fish AI for the acid bath. Ooh. There we go. Honestly, not doing too badly this level. No, there isn't colossal failure. What a furnace we know what we're doing this time. When do we? Oh, um, the rate's about 50-50 for having any idea what we're doing. That's part of the fun, though. Just plow through, figure things out on the way. Plow through, figure things out, and have no idea what the real cause of the potato famine was, depending on which live stream we're in. Oh, I want that extra life. It, interestingly enough, there was one part of Ireland that was... Uh, perfectly fine during the potato famine. They're actually thriving. Go on. Uh, Forth and Bargy area. The land around them was, uh, well, the soils around them were complicated enough so they could grow things like beans and wheat. They didn't have to rely on the potato crop. They, diver they were able to diversify their crops. It was also the location of an old. Uh, some would say dialect of English, others would say uh, language itself. Some call it the Fourth and Vargi dialect. Mm -hmm. I think another word for it was Yola, Y O L A. And so, when the rest of the island was starving, these people were thriving, eating their beans. 
Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very safe, bro. Come for the stream, stay for the Irish potato famine. And then most, and then the population of Ireland has not recovered since the famine. Yeah, pretty much. Meanwhile, the population on this island has absolutely exploded. God knows the population of Ireland's tried, though. Wait, um, right, the population of Ireland what? Tried to recover. Christ, this mini boss starting to piss me off. There we go. Well, because of that, the Irish diaspora, especially in America, is huge. And then you got Irish diaspora in places like Montserrat. Curiously enough, um, uh, black people in Montserrat bred with um, Irish people, and one of the descendants is the famous bl um, black Irish Montserrat boxer. Can't remember his name though, but. That's one of those peculiarities of history. Where the hell is Montserrat again? Because isn't that one of the places that's like... I swear to God, Montserrat has something to do with world fashion capitals. No, Montserrat is a, a volcanic island in the Caribbean. The famous volcano Sofia Hills erupted, and most of the island is uninhabitable. Okay. Most of the island, about two thirds of it, is in an exclusion zone because of uh, the volcano that erupted about... 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Don't know what I'm thinking of them. Also, there is uh, there are populations that do speak Irish in uh, Newfoundland, I believe. Newfoundland and Labrador, Canadian Eastern Island. Honestly, it's kind of good that we discovered all of the countries when we did, because otherwise the names would be like far fucking stupider. Not necessarily. On the one hand, Newfoundland's like a stupid name, but on the other hand, at least it's to the point. Yeah, when you look at the etymology of some New World names, um, some of them are rather to the point. Canada comes from oh, a shit. New World name. Isn't it there's a shitload of places in America where stuff's just called like River River or something? Yeah, I think so. Because they'd, really... the, they'd ask the natives, what do you call that? And they'd just give them, like, the local words for river. Yeah, there's a, a very... Well, there was an Oscar bait film that came out about five years ago called The Place Beyond the Pines. Uh, it was set in a town with a Native American name that literally meant The Place Beyond the Pines. Oh, God. I think there's a place in England that's, like, called Hill, 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 Hill or something as well. Because of um, the weird translation of it. That reminds me of the uh, sentence Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. Isn't there a similar one with um, bison? Not sure about that one. But I know that the Buffalo sentence is grammatically correct. There reminds me also, there is a, there is a, um, a poem, no, a story in Mandarin Chinese or. Uh, about a man called Mr. Xi eating lions. It's very difficult to pronounce or just to read because it all it heavily relies on tones and it's just different tonal variations of Xi. So to the un to the untrained ear, it sounds like the word Xi constantly, so Xi, 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 Xi. But obviously Mandarin is a heavy tonal language, so those tones completely change the word. But the whole poem is just that. Or well, the whole story is that Mr. She eating lion. Let's talk about weird stories for a second. Are you familiar at all with the Welsh holy book? The Welsh what? The Welsh holy book. No. There's like a book of Welsh mythology, and um, I've been reading some of it recently, and it contains quite possibly the greatest fucking sentence I've ever seen. It's the story about this Welsh guy who's a giant who goes over to Ireland to fight a war or something. And um, the book just contains the sentence. He explains that the fact that the Irish used cauldrons to revive their dead. Oh, it's, it's like he fights in a war and then like he gets injured trying to destroy the Irish cauldrons. So he has his friends decapitate him and bury his head near London. 
and he ends up becoming a mountain. What, like Snowdonia or something? Yeah. Oh god, Welsh stories are fucking wild. Oh dear. Oh, those Celts are fun people, aren't they? Br Bram the Blessed, there you go. If you want to look up that story. Right, all my time in uh, that part of the world, all my time in Wales, and I hadn't heard of the story. Yeah, Welsh have some fantastic stories. How many of them involve being beaten by the English? Get over there again. Oh! That's a nice detail. What? The fucking boss is hiding in the background. Huh. Like, you see that big-ass window in the background full of water? Yeah. He's, like, swimming around in there occasionally. That's neat. I like little details like that. Oh, the block, the block dropper makes this so easy. Does Elon Musk blockchain? <laughs> Does Elon Musk have a blockchain after yesterday? Yeah, have you seen the stories of people who put their life savings into meme coins, like uh, Bitcoin and Dogecoin, and they lost everything? Which is kind of like what you deserve if you let's be honest cryptocurrency is basically just a pyramid scheme of extra steps it's uh, a lot of this to me seems like a pump and dump are you familiar with what's known as the grazer fool fallacy no oh, fuck's sake it's this fallacy where um basically you try and make money off a situation by buying something and then you have to convince someone with less knowledge than yourself that it's worth more than what you paid for. And that's basically... Well, so you can make money. Yeah, that's basically the entire crypto market in a nutshell. So that's, that is a variation on um, Pyramid Scheme, then? Well, yeah, pretty much. Okay, Pyramid Scheme is just convincing people that they can um, make money if they buy shit off of you first. Yeah, I know what a pyramid scheme is. Relies on continuous input. Oh, I know, but I, I'm gonna, like, explain that just in case there's people in the audience who have no idea what the fuck a pyramid scheme is. The old scheme of that old there pyramid there! It was a building scheme by the Egyptian government. It's it get cheap labour. Oh, can't get much cheaper in the labour than slaves. You said it, not me. Yeah. I'll be honest, that, no, that, that leads, that does lead into um, an actual question though, which is where would he, where did Egypt get their slaves from again? Oh, I, if it wasn't a different ethnicity within Egypt, if, if it wasn't Jews from Canaan, or other Canaanite, Philistine people, was it, were it Nubians? Were they Nubian? That's, I think it's probably Jew, like this is the thing, Can I, it, more, what I was trying to ask was what country outside of Egypt would they have gone to to get them? Yeah, either Nubia or Canaan. Mm hmm Right, let's have another crack at this nonsense. Just go around the U-Bend of acid. Who needs this much acid? People with a large stomach. Hmm. Or, you know, Hunter S. Thompson. Oh, God. Oh, Mr. Creosote. Or Marlon Brando. Oh, God. This isn't even a chemistry factory. This is actually just like an artist's rendition of the inside of Marlon Brando's stomach. Like, if you just, if you just mute the music and listen in the background, you can just hear, Please help me. I'm incredibly hungry. I haven't eaten for at least five minutes. He really let himself go. If we look at him in a streetcar named Desire. Any any woman who watches Streetcar Named Desire, they see Marlon Brando. Right? God. The last time of the same. Yeah, like Marlon Brando needs that Lord though to protect him from the Yakuza. What? So one one mafia against another from the Godfather. 
No, no, like, they just take on Marlon Brando, as we've established in, like, five live streams now. I'm so sorry we're bringing this up again, son. As we've established previously, Marlon Brando is, in fact, a pillar man, Reese. He's so, like, Marlon Brando's just an immortal super being who lives to eat people. Uh, that reminds me, there is a film with uh, Marlon Brando and I think Matthew Broderick. And uh, Marlon Brando reprises his character, he reprises his role, very similar role to the mafioso boss. But it's actually very wholesome. I genuinely thought you were about to say that there's a film where Marlon Brando eats someone. A few moments later. Speaking of armadillo, it just reminds me of that one guy from K who ate an armadillo and got lactose. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh, some guy on yep. uh, 4chan's weapon board, K, he was hunting uh, in the woods and he found an armadillo, he shot it, so he cooked it and he ate it. And everyone was saying, wait, don't. Uh, you you really shouldn't do that. And he said, "Well, I ate, I ate an armadillo, and I've got a rash." Does anybody know what the beast comes from armadillo? They said, "Wait, are they linked to leprosy?" Oh. So he goes to its hospital, and he does indeed have a confirmed case of leprosy. Yeah, that sounds but, like uh, fortunate. Like, just do cook the armadillo. Don't think the situation through. So everybody on the thread is saying, "You you you, you are destined to become the armadillo you slew." <laughs> there are still leper colonies around in the world. Maybe you should visit one of them. Oh, God. And someone also said, become Baldwin and retake the Holy Land. Become Baldwin? Yeah, Baldwin IV, uh, the, the famous uh, leper king of the Crusader States. Sorry, I genuinely thought you meant Alec Baldwin then? And I was like, why the fuck is he retaking the Holy Lands? No, there was a very famous Crusader king. I forget which one, maybe he was Baldwin III or Baldwin IV. But, um, <laughs> Alec, Alec Baldwin IV. In his finest role, yeah. Yeah, he was a leper king. Wise man for his age, but unfortunately plagued with leprosy and he died of it. Can you actually die of leprosy? I thought that it was the wounds that you got that you couldn't feel the pain for. Probably that, but it just degraded him. It makes you weak. Because I, like, I was always told that leprosy couldn't actually kill you. I'll have to look into that. I suppose it's a... In that way, it's a bit like HIV or AIDS, where it doesn't outright kill you. Yeah, it just compromises your immune system. Yeah, and it's disease you get because you have it. You know that if you get HIV, it resets your immune system? That's the scary part. No, I didn't. Yeah, it completely wipes your immune system's memory, essentially. It's a very serious illness, because even after all, the, all of these decades, we still can't cure it beyond drilling stem cells into bone marrow the two times that in history it happened, and there's only been two people who've recovered from it, or cured from it. And that was purely by accident to treat cancer first by uh, bone marrow stem cell transplants. The Berlin patient, Timothy Brown, who recently died a few years ago, or then someone else called the London patient, who's still alive, uh, you can't recover from it, and without treatment it will 100% kill you. We still can't vaccinate against it. A few moments later... Yeah, here we go. Although leprosy is curable, if it is left untreated, it can cause permanent physical impairments and damage to a person's nerves, skin, eyes, and limbs. There's a famous film made about that leper king, by the way, Kingdom of Heaven. Have you seen it? I have to give it a look at some point. Yeah, it's a quite good film, except uh, there was a huge historical mistake they made towards the start of the film. Uh -huh. So, the protagonist is from France, and on his way to the Holy Land, um, he says to a group of people, uh, how do I get to Jerusalem? And uh, they say, go east until the men speak Italian, then keep going east until they speak something else. Let me guess, it only didn't exist as we know it back then? Correct. Um, this is in the 12th century. There was no such thing as an Italian language back then. There were early forms of obviously Tuscan and Sicilian and um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Neapolitan, Sardinian, all sorts of languages. There was a time when the most powerful state uh, in Italy was actually Sicilian. Because they actually owned part of North Africa for about 20 years. 
And had history turned out differently, then Sicily, Sicily could have united it, uh, Italy, and then their king, Roger II, could have been the, one of the most powerful men in Europe. We're gonna get a lot of mileage out of that Sicilian's cliff this episode, I can tell. Oh yeah. So it was, um, particular Normans. Norman Kingdom of Sicily. Sicilians. He owned part of the mainland of Italy. And he also owned, um, North Africa, so Tunisia, the far east of Algeria, and the western coast of Libya. But then he stupidly made war with the Byzantines, and he didn't consolidate his gains in North Africa. And he just, um, let the, I think it was the Almoravids, retake uh, his lands, and then that spelled the end for the, any remaining North African Christians and uh, North African uh, whites. If there were communities of them left, he still spoke um, an African Latin language, a, a language derived from Latin in North Africa. The descendants of the Romans and the Berbers, the, the termed African Romans, or Roman Africans, one of the two. These people were um, m either mixes, uh, varying degrees of mixing between Roman, uh, Berber, or Punic. Um, I can't remember his name, but Rome did have an emperor from that region. Uh, I think he was a Roman Berber. He is what they historians have called uh, a Roman African. He never lost his um, African accent. Uh, contemporary sources say. So the, the kind of Latin he spoke was distinctive enough to have an accent that people could tell was from Africa. And St. Augustine, um, when he went to Italy, people lambasted him for his pronunciation. It's weird because you never really think of Latin as having an accent. Yeah. Mostly because of like TV dramas and movies. Exactly. And because the language is dead, we never know how it was originally spoken. Well, insofar as the original accent it was spoken with. I mean, if you, if you if you believe anything on the internet, it's probably closer to an American accent. Oh. I have, have you seen I have that fucking stupid that. myth about Shakespeare? Oh, I have much to say about that myth. No, you, you are familiar with the myth, though. Apparently Shakespeare sounds better in American. Which is completely fucking wrong. Go on, what, yeah, there is... What did you want to say? Yeah, so I'll, I'll have to go into this um, little tangent now. There are communities... This little in... tangent, Reese. Our entire stream is a tangent. There are layers of tangents. This is like an onion. We have to go deeper. It's Inception. Here's Inception. There's Inception. Here thing. <laughs> yeah, so there are communities in North America, mainly in the USA, along the coast of North Carolina and the... I think it's New England where they still have people who speak with accents discernible from places like Norfolk, uh, wider East Anglia, and the West Country. But these people had ancestors from these parts of England who settled there. And I'm so fucking really annoyed different. that I made that perfectly after buying all of the armor. That's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, you can find the videos on YouTube, and if you listen to these people, you can definitely tell where their ancestors came from. So, the presence of these people, these communities, proves that these accents were closer to ours hundreds of years ago, or that these isolated communities hadn't had their accent influenced by the wider changes the Americans had. Anyway, yeah, m most people don't realize that Latin did evolve in North Listen Africa. Sardinian is said to be its closest living relative. Incidentally, Sardinian is also seen to be the closest living relative to Latin itself. The most conservative um, derivation of Latin, if you will. How about some ether? All right, something. I forgot about the beer. You want some? Let me. Ah, oh, said man is weak to the wall. None can stop the wall, Reese. Devil Ether. The wall conquers all. If you know, you know. Mind recoils in horror. Finish the fucking story. What about the glands? Good. The engineer's gonna have a field day replacing all of his voice lines with fear and loathing. 
Oh dear. <laughs> Good, we've got another trophy, Reese. Any anything else that you want to say about um Oh god, I love that it gives him a little scuba helmet. Anything else that you want to say about ancient cultures while we're here? Well, St. Augustine, in his time, he said, he described Punic as a still living language. And the influences that um, languages like Punic and Berber had on African Latin mainly came from local topography and plants that obviously the Latin people had no native words for. Mm -hmm. And um, St. Augustine died in, I think it was Hippo Regius, when it was being besieged by the Vandals, the Germanic tribe that came from the north. And uh, when that city was being besieged, he was there writing, and then he, he died during that siege. And um, I think that was a part of the city where most people would speak that Latin language. Um, at that time, the lands of Africa Proconsularis were pretty much fully Latinized, and Carthage was the biggest Latin speaking king city outside of Rome itself in the empire. And then there's also a, um, a dead Latin language spoken in the Balkans, uh, modern day former Yugoslavia, but mainly Croatia, uh, Dalmatian. Mm -hmm. Fully died about 150 uh, years ago. Uh -huh. Good, and on that note, I think it's time for us to end the episode there. This really? has been a complete fucking nuisance. On the bright side, we actually made some progress this time. As opposed to an hour of nothing but deaths. Good, we'll see you all next time.